Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Amy here and today finally we're going to be talking about my October read. So we're wrapping up October. It's almost the end of November. Where has have I been? I, I don't know. I've it's, November has just been all over the place. It's passed by so fast. This year has passed by so fast. I feel like I'm so far behind as far as like videos and what I want to put out there for y'all. Um, we just got back from a mini vacay. That was super fun. We celebrated my sister-in-law's birthday in Hot Springs, Arkansas. So my husband and I went with my brother and my sister-in-law and her parents. Uh, we had a great time. But it's also nice to be back home and be back to kind of get back into reality. You know what I'm saying? My month has just been all over the place. I haven't really read anything that I told y'all I'm going to read. Like my reading has just been off the charts. Like I, I'm totally going off the, the track with my, with my reading. Uh, here we are almost done with November and I haven't read anything that I told y'all I was going to read. <laughs> Maybe one or two books that I told y'all I was going to read, but anyway, it doesn't matter, right? A TBR is just what it is. It's to be read. If I don't get to it, I'll eventually get to it. We'll get there. But for the month of October, um, I read, let's see, one, two, three, four, twelve books in October. Well, read slash listen to. I listen to my books a lot if you haven't noticed. Um, because the majority of my time is sitting at my desk doing a lot of data entry type work. There are days where I do need to th put my thing in cap on and I can't listen to a book, but most of the time I can. So that's why I listen so much. And I also just like to have something in my ear as I'm doing housework and uh, and things like that. Uh, and I love listening along with reading the book. If the narrator is like spot on, I I am all about sitting down and reading along with with them. Um, but anyway, with that said, we'll we'll start off with My Lovely Wife. I started the month of October with this book. This is by Samantha Downing. I did li listen to it. I listened and kind of read along. Um, I gave it three stars. Uh, Everyone was raving about this book, and I guess I just, I don't know, there was actually something about it that just kind of bored me. Uh, we basically have a husband and wife duo that are a killing duo. <laughs> Our male character, which to this day, I don't think his name was ever mentioned in this book. He's telling the story, and he never tells us his name. But he goes out, and he finds these women that basically are not going to be missed. And I think his wife is the one that does the killing. So I was, and that's pretty much it, you know, and it's, it wasn't as much like, I was thinking along the lines of, um, definitely not Mr. and Mrs. Smith, but more like it's a comedy with Jim Carrey. Um, where him and his wife are bank robbers. Like, they get into, like, a tight spot at home. Like, he loses his job. I mean, this is going off the rails of this book. I'm not even talking about this book. I can't remember the name of this, this movie, though. Jim Carrey and his wife in the movie, they kind of uh, get in a bind. He loses his job. She quits her job because he thinks he's going to get a promotion where it ends up like he actually loses his job. Um, so, they... <laughs> They start robbing banks together, and it's freaking hilarious. But anyway, that's kind of what this reminded me of. It not in a funny way, but it's like he went out and he seeked these women, and then she kind of did the killing. Anyway, I don't know why it reminded me of that over like Mr. and Mrs. Smith, but um, there you go. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Like I said, it kind of bored me. I think I had my hopes a little too high. It didn't really start getting interesting until the end uh, where there was um, a nice little plot, plot twist there that I did appreciate. Although part of the ending was kind of starting to piss me off. 
Um, but then I ended up how it all like smoothed out, I guess I could say. But, but yeah, there you go. That was my lovely wife. Next up, I read Tied to Trouble. Um, this was by Megan Erickson. This is actually um, book number three in a book series called Gamers uh, by this author. But I have not read any of the other books in the series. I just went ahead. I just went right into this one. So it can be read as a standalone. And shame on me. I thought I did a review on this, but I don't see it on my Goodreads. So my apologies if you were hoping for a review on that book. <laughs> But anyway, I gave it four stars. I really liked it. It was um, it was sort of not a not a hate to love kind of thing because they didn't really know each other. Um, anyway, uh, Chad. We have characters Chad Lake. Um, he his sister works for some sort of gaming magazine company, and she was having some some sort of party. I don't know if it was birthday party or whatever. But her like right hand guy who is Owen. Um, he was at the party as well, and he's always kind of known who her brother is, you know, very good looking, kind of bad boyish kind of guy. Um, they, they sort of meet at the party, and right away, like, Chad is immediately into Owen. He, there's something about Owen that he really likes. Owen is, like, super nerdy, geeky, um, wearing a little bow tie. And there's something about it that Chad's like into. So that's kind of how they meet at the party and they like have this one night together um, out of like a tease kind of thing. And um, and their relationship sort of blossoms from there and they fit well together. I really love the whole bad boy um, meets geeky nerd kind of situation we had going on. I really liked even though Chad had seen on the front, he seemed like a really, like a bad boy. Um, he really had a soft heart and he was really, really a good guy. He just needed some help in like what path that he needed to take. And Owen was kind of there to help him figure that out. And they, they sort of helped each other like out. Chad kind of helped Owen open up a little bit more and Owen kind of helped Chad, um, figure out what he wanted to do with his life. Uh, it was a really fun read. Um, I enjoyed it. This is the only male male romance I believe in the series of the gamers ser series because um, it says this is a part of a male female series but can be read as a standalone and it definitely can be. You definitely don't miss out on I, I mean I don't see, see how you can miss out on anything. I, I really enjoyed it. Next up I finished the series the Lancaster Fall series. This is All That Remains. This is book number three in that series of the male male romance. Uh, this is sort of a mystery male male romance which I really enjoyed. In this book I, I do feel like you need to read the series in order to um, kind of get familiar with the characters and what they're all about. So in this one, we're following along with Josh, who is a resident of Lan Lancaster Falls and longtime friend of other characters that were in the first two books. He's also the owner of the Lancaster Falls Hotel. And um, as they're still kind of solving this whole mystery, um, part of the mystery was solved in book one, but there's more to it and continues to be more to it. Of course, in book three, we come to an end with the mystery being solved. And um, I really liked that. I really liked, it wasn't like they were dragging out the mystery. It was just all sorts of little pieces coming together. It was just so much that went into this missing person from the first book. It was, it was really spectacularly done. So if you're looking for a mystery with a little male male romance on the side, this is a series for you. Um, I definitely think this is a very good one for beginners of male male romances. Uh, if you're interested in getting to, into that genre and you like series, this is definitely a very good one. But anyway, in come FBI agent Lucas Beaumont. He is he and some of his other F. FBI agents are staying at the Lancaster Hotel and him and Josh form a connection um, right right away there's there's something there but it takes a little while um, Lucas is a little on the not shy side but just you know he's not sure if if he should pursue Josh I guess um, but I love the budding romance between the two of them I loved how the mystery of 
the continuing mystery from the first two books finalized in this book three. It, it was very good. Loved it. I gave it four stars. Next up, I read My Best Friend's Exorcism. I did listen to this. I listened and kind of read along with it. Um, this was very, very interesting. And since reading this book, I have grown more and more into Grady Hendrix's writing. I really love the 80s vibe to this book. I, I'm not on, into possession at all, but this, the way that he wrote this book and the way the possession played out, I, I was okay with it. Like now I did get to get really bored with the whole possession thing. I just felt like it was too drawn out. It was lots of unnecessary stuff, but that's just me. I'm not into possession, but besides that, I really enjoyed um, the story. I love the friendship between Abby and Gretchen. And we follow Abby and she's the one telling the story of um, her friend Gretchen's possession. Another thing I kind of got a little annoyed at that no one would believe what was happening to Gretchen. Like, it all happened one night. Um, Abby and Gretchen and two other friends were staying at like this cabin in the woods, always a cabin in the woods. Um, and Gretchen kind of goes missing for a little while. And when she comes out of the woods, she's she's totally different. Something you can tell something has happened, but. It's almost like she can't quite put a finger on it. But then these things or weird things start to happen to her. And the only person that believes her is Abby. And Abby's trying to tell everyone else like what is happening. And you're know, trying to get help for Gretchen. And no one is believing her. I mean, it's the 80s, you know. Uh, it was a very well, well written, very well played out. Um, there were some very grotesque moments in this book where I was just like, ugh. Um, which I've come to find is... is just how Grady Hendrix writes because there's I read another Grady Hendrix in October and I I out loud was just going uh just like yuck <laughs> just out loud by myself while reading the book um so yeah some very grotesque moments but otherwise I really enjoyed it, it was fun I love the vibe of the whole story I gave it four stars next up in the month of October I read two of my book of the month picks for that month, the first one being The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Swab. I was very surprised at how much I really enjoyed this book. I gave it four stars, but it's basically just Addie LaRue's life. How she was like born in the late 1600s and she basically made a deal with the devil. In that particular era and time, women are supposed to like just be married off and have children. Uh, Addie did not want that life, so she prayed to the gods and she prayed to the world god <laughs> um, and she made a deal with the god of darkness um, where she could be free but that deal of course came with a price um, Addie had to leave an invisible life where she was seen but the moment you turn your head you do not remember her at all. She could be standing right in front of you and you can look away and look back at her and be like, oh, who are you? So she had to live 300 years of this type of life. But I, I really enjoyed how she um, went about getting herself known and um, like just putting herself out there to be remembered. She also doesn't grow old, so she stays looking the same as she did as when she made this deal. She does one day find someone that sees her and remembers her and her life sort of changes after that. It was very a very interesting story, uh, very magical. Writing was fantastic. I did also listen as I read along narration was spot on. She did a fantastic job of portraying the characters and making them come to life, which actually made the story that much more magical. So I highly recommend the audio if um, you have not read this yet. Then I jumped into Invisible Girl by Lisa Jewell and I was completely shocked and very impressed by this book. I gave it five stars. I really enjoyed it. I couldn't put it down. I flew through it. I did listen to it via audio, which was fantastic because we have a voice for each of our um, characters that we follow in the book. We follow Sapphire, who is 
I think like at the time we're following her, she's a 15 year old girl. She had something very traumatic happen to her at a young age and she, she was seeing a psychiatrist um, and his name was Rowan. We don't follow Rowan, but we follow Rowan's wife who is Kate. So we have a voice for Kate and then we follow Owen. Owen is a middle-aged teacher. Owen's a little weird, a little off. Um, he comes across just, I guess he makes people feel uncomfortable. I'm not really sure, but he gets accused of harassing um, some of the students and staff at school. So you follow, we follow him along with his journey and him telling the story. It all starts, it goes back to Valentine's Day night. Something happened that night. Pay very close attention in the beginning because I had to go back and, and reread or re-listen to it. Um, there's like a prologue of that Valentine's night and then from there you go back like I don't know like a week or so before Valentine's. I'm not sure how far we I don't remember how far we go back but all our characters are telling us the story from like that point on. Except for Owen. Owen Owen and Kate are in present time and Sapphire is the only one who's kind of going back and telling us the story of what happened before that night came. But she ends up being the one that goes missing on Valentine's Day night. Um, so we get her story that leads up to that particular event. And then Kate and Owen kind of tell the story from present time as to what is happening in present time versus um, Sapphire's previous timeline. It's, it's a little bit confusing. Pay very close attention. Uh, it, but it was a very exciting and fun read for me. I really enjoyed it. I couldn't put it down. This is the other Grady Hendrix books I read, The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. Y'all, this was so much fun. Highly, highly recommend it if you have not read it yet. I'm pretty sure I gave it, I gave it four stars. Why did I give it four stars? <laughs> I guess because you're just following a bunch of middle-aged mothers, women. Um, it's based in like the 1990s. I believe the story starts in 1993 and ends like in 1995 or something like that. I don't, I don't, I don't remember. But it's based in the 1990s. I love how Grady Hendrix does that. I love how he takes like the 80s and the 90s and and makes a story of that time. In the beginning of the book, he does let us know that this sort of takes place after the events of My Best Friend's Exorcism. It's in the same type of town. Um, it just takes place like kind of after those events. Um, so anyway, we have, we we're mainly following Patricia. Patricia is a housewife. She takes care of her home, uh, keeping up with her family. You know, typical 90s housewife uh, takes care of the husband. Um, and her husband's mother is living with them, so she's taking care of her as well. Although it becomes a little bit too much, so she hires someone to come in and sort of help her take care of um, her mother-in-law. Um, but on the side, just to like give them something exciting to look forward to, all these women have a book club where they read um, just exciting murder, kind of true crime type of books. And then one night, Patricia gets gets attacked and it's sort of a weird attack. So after she gets attacked, someone new comes into town. Uh, so Patricia takes it upon herself to welcome this newcomer into town. He sort of becomes like, he just sort of takes over everything. He sort of takes over the book club. He sort of takes over all the wives, husbands. Um, of course, he is, he is a vampire. Patricia has her suspicions. Um, but she doesn't really know for sure what what exactly he is. Um, but it's I think what I found found like it was bored. I was bored with it because it was just basically her trying to figure out who he was, what he was, and when she once she figured out what he was and what he was doing, she was trying to save all these children because all these children start to go missing and um, she starts to just try to figure out what to do until finally um, her and her group of book club women get together and they're gonna slay this vampire. It was so much fun and entertaining. And of course, again, some very grotesque moments in this book, 
lots of places where I was just screaming out loud, like just, ew, like seriously, it was, it was gross, but it was super fun. Um, the narration of Patricia was spot on. I highly, I highly recommend the, the audio if you haven't uh, read this yet. It's, a, it's a kind of a big one. Um, I recommend the audio because it was just fun to get the sound effects and the, the voice of Patricia, I mean, fits her so well. She's a perfect 90s housewife. Okay, after that, I tried, I tried the Chestnut Man. I'm not even going to butcher the author's name. But I DNF'd this after like chapter 12, I believe, um, which wasn't very far in the book. I just, I just had a hard time following along. I couldn't get into it. I, I tried. I made it to chapter 12. <laughs> and, and I was just like... I, I didn't even know what was happening. I, I didn't even know what was going on. Something had already happened. I think, I think a murder had already taken place, and I was like, "Wait, uh, what?" Yeah, it just, it, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't even know if I want to attempt to ever try it again. Um, uh, it may be going in an unhaul pile. So, there's that. If you read the Chestnut Man and you liked it, let me know in the comments down below if you think I should try it again. Then I read Clown in the Cornfield. Um, this is by Adam Caesar, I believe. Um, I actually borrowed this from my friend Debbie and I loved it. I gave it five stars. It was, it was so much fun. It's a young adult horror. So we follow Quinn on uh, her and her father are moving to Ked this place called Kettle Springs. Um, he is going to be the new uh, resident doctor in town. This happens after the death of her mother. So they're sort of moving away to sort of kind of start over, um, make a, a new life for themselves. On her first day of school, she makes friends really fast with this other, this other group of kids um, that we kind of hear from in the very first part of the book. Uh, there's like a prologue section that we get. And so Quinn, um, becomes acquainted uh, with this group of friends and the story moves pretty quickly from there and we basically get a night of massacre. The town has a mascot and he is a clown. He is called Frindo the Clown which is just creepy as all get out. Um, I'm not a clown person <laughs> so I can all I can see it and I could see it the whole time in my head and on this night they they're having like a, a party all these kids are having some sort of party um, but Frendo the clown comes out and there's just massacre a night of massacre and Quinn and her friends are trying to escape trying to get away trying to kill Frendo the Clown, which Frendo has other Frendos. It was a lot of fun. It was high impact. I really wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did. Um, and there was a very fun little twist at the end that I appreciated. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Five stars. Then I picked up Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chabowski. This, I, I liked it, but I didn't love it. So we follow um, a young, very young man. Uh, I believe he was at the age of seven. His name is Christopher and he and his mom move. Um, she's trying to get away from an abusive boyfriend. They escape one night away from him and they move to a town for a fresh start. In the beginning of the book, we also get like 50 years prior where another little boy named David goes missing and then then we pick up 50 years later with Christopher for after a couple days of, you know, being, being in his new school, him and his mom are struggling, living in an apartment. Um, he goes missing. He's missing for about a week when he comes out from the woods. I believe he like, he follows something into the woods and, and he ends up being gone for like six days or something like that. When he comes out, he's a totally different little boy. He's just, he's smart, more outgoing. He's more of like a leader to all the other little boys at school. He kind of forms like a, a, a friendship with a, a group of guys, but he starts hearing these voices and these voices are telling him to do all sorts of things. Um, he wants him to build a tree house. 
So the voice sort seems to be trying to help him because there's also a, another voice that he refers to as the hissing lady. I guess she sounds hissy. Um, <laughs> and then we have the nice man who is his his friend um, and the nice man seems to be helping him. It, it, was, it was very weird. It's very hard to explain. It's very different from anything I've ever read and the best summary I can give of this book is that it was basically a fight between good and evil, heaven and hell kind of situation. Once again, I did get bored at some points. I mean, it was a very, very long book. You would think there would be some unnecessary parts, but there really wasn't in the end. It all, it all kind of came together where I see where, why it was such a long book, why this long of a story had to be told. I also just wanted it to all be over with. <laughs> I was just like, okay, can we be done with it now? So yeah, I, I think I gave it, I gave it a four stars on Goodreads, but my true rating is like a 3.75, something like that. Not really quite a four stars for me because I didn't, I, I liked it. I didn't love it. I didn't like it, like it. I, like I said, I just wanted it, in the end, I just wanted it all to be over with. But I did listen to it, and the narration was very good. So if you're intimidated by how big this book is, and you still, but you want to read it, I recommend the audio. It definitely did a good job of keeping me involved in the story. By that time in the month of October, I kind of had enough of all the spooky all the spookiness, all the scary stories that I was reading. So I hopped into my tried and true Mel Mel romances and I read, I started the Primetime series by Ella Frank. Uh, the, the first book in the series is Inside Affair. We follow Xander and Sean. Xander is a very popular news anchor. So he's like semi kind of famous. Uh, and Sean is actually Xander's best friend's older brother. Xander, Xander's best friend is Bailey. They've actually dated in the past, but um, they're better off as just best friends, basically. Um, kept in touch throughout the years. They see each other at least once a week. Uh, Sean is Bailey's older brother. Sean is a detective for the Chicago... PD. So when Xander is, gets informed that he has a very serious stalker on his hands, um, his boss wants him to get a bodyguard. So Xander takes it upon himself. He tells him, I have the perfect person. Um, I'm, I'm going to ask him. I, I know someone in the police department. I'm going to ask him um, if he has any anyone he can refer me to. So when he goes to Sean, Sean decides that he's going to take on the job himself because, um, for one, he's kind of on like a little vacation time. He just came off like a big case. Um, so he's on vacation, so he has time to do it. It's a little extra money on the side. And he, he knows Xander. He's been knowing Xander for years because Bailey and Xander have been best friends for years. Um, so he takes it upon himself to, he's going to protect Xander. And Xander and Sean don't have the best relationship. So I loved, loved, loved the banter that they have in the beginning of the series or in the first book of just going back and forth of not, not really hating each other, but it's almost like a brotherly sort of banter back and forth until things start to change between the two and they each start to see each other in a different way. And by the end of the book, uh, things start to feel a little bit more serious. And then we head into Breaking News, which is book two. After the events of book one, Sean lands himself in the hospital. Xander takes it upon himself because he feels responsible. So he kind of moves in with Sean to take care of him. And from in book two, it's all about Sean and Xander and how their relationship blossoms. I just finished book three, so you'll hear more about that book in my November wrap-up. But the first two books I really enjoyed. I gave the first book a five star and then I gave the second book a four star. Um, just because there wasn't really, you know, much going on. It was just Xander and Sean getting to know each other. This would be a perfect, perfect series as well. 
if you are if you are getting into the genre or if you're curious about male male romances very good first time book to read there's not a lot of um like angst and there's not there's very very low kind of sexy times or or, or the sexy times are done very um classy and discreetly i don't know but it's more the story of xander and sean and i love the high impact of the first book how there was like a kind of mystery stalker in there kind of enhancing the storyline and blossoming into xander and sean's romance i really really love that but yeah great series i love it you can tell when i get so excited about about a book <laughs> And last but not least, um, I'm thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reed. I gave this three stars just because I was completely confused. Completely confused by the end of it. I had no idea what was going on to the point where I had to go online and look for a spoiler review because I had no idea what happened. You think you're reading a story about a girl and a guy. They meet each other. They start dating. And then she decides that... Mm, I don't know. I think I'm going to I think I'm going to end things. So, that's what you think you're reading. And they like go on this road trip to like meet his parents and the whole time she's wondering if like she really should be going on this road trip with him. I was just like, okay, I thought this was supposed to be creepy. I was not creeped out with this at all. Maybe a little bit because there was some weirdness kind of in the beginning where it seems like she has a stalker. Because she's like sees him outside of her window and then he's constantly calling her. Um, but there's not much else really about it. I thought maybe it was going to lead into that. Um, but it totally goes somewhere different. But I will say once I realized what actually happened in the end, it was very clever. Very clever. There were like these small little monologues like in between segments of the book because there weren't chapters there were just like split split chapters or split segments of the book where there were like these monologue section where a man and a woman uh it seems to be talking about someone that has died so i also thought we were maybe i'm gonna have like this murder mystery so yeah when i finally realized what i was actually reading I can see how it was it was very cleverly done and I'd actually like to kind of either reread it or or watch the movie and just see how I feel knowing now that I understand <laughs> knowing that I understand the ending now but I didn't find it creepy at all except for maybe those little little bitty um, parts in the beginning where like she talks about her stalker oh I heard that it was such a creepy book but anyway that's everything I read in the month of October and I just realized that I have I left my door open in the back there. So thank y'all for sticking around with this kind of uh, chaotic wrap up of October because I had a hard time remembering. <laughs> remembering a lot about these books I had to pull up my Goodreads and be like okay what what happened in this book. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of these books and what you thought about them. What were your thoughts on them? What are you reading now? Hope you're all doing well out there. Cheers from me. Hugs all around and I will see y'all in my next video. Bye y'all.